One of the things that got me most interested during the Qualcomm event earlier this week, beside the fact that we're gonna see a revolution in VR and AR form factors, video of course in the description below, were the words about a new Wi-Fi standard and laying down the tech for the future of wireless VR. Hey, Ty here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel and here we are back with another deep dive tech video and this time talking about the way we're gonna be able finally to ditch our cables and finally start the real AR and VR wireless revolution. So what you say? Let's get into it. To get in this video, we have to start explaining what made possible wireless VR Till this moment, because wireless is not a new thing in VR. We saw accessories like the TP Cast back in the days to make the original Vive and Rift completely wireless, but with some major problems. Now, unfortunately, this continued. RIP for TP Cast, by the way. Now we have the Vive wireless adapter, the in house solution for Vive, Vive Pro, and Cosmos running a 60 GHz connection, giving low latency and enabling high resolution as well. Review about it, by the way, on the channel very, very soon. And now not to mention the third-party solution for the Oculus Quest, like Virtual Desktop, giving acceptable latency and making possible to stream VR games wireless with our standalone headset. But both of these technology were taunted by a common problem, being based on the wrong connection to start with for different reasons. The Oculus Quest third-party solution is based on a common Wi-Fi signal, 2.45 GHz, with limited bandwidth when congested and overcrowded spectrum. Just take a moment to check how many devices are connected to your router. Well, you, you get the point very fast. With advantage though, waves wide enough to go through surfaces. That's why you can use your Wi-Fi in every room of your apartment of on your house. Something that instead the 60 gigahertz connection like the one of the Vive wireless adapter can't do because the waves are too short and focused and so they're gonna bounce on different surfaces and even a piece of paper can actually destroy completely the connection, making the line of sight of this connection a must to have the best wireless VR experience possible with very high resolution and very high bandwidth, of course, to support it. We're of course gonna talk more about this solution more in the future, as I said not so long ago, but well, these are the major pros and cons at the end of the day. So the perfection will be to put these two together, having a bandwidth high enough to support high resolution transmissions. Also having a less crowded and congestible is that even a word? I don't know. A spectrum to be able to have a more reliable and low latency connection. And all of these with waves wide enough to be able to don't get the occlusion from different materials, including our own bodies. And in a future presented by Qualcomm, when we're gonna use our phones as a computing unit, of course, for our VR headset or our viewers, as they like to call them, well, you will expect to have your phone in your pocket and your glasses or viewers in front of your eyes, of course. And that's where Wi-Fi 6E comes in the game. Qualcomm just presented the Fast Connect 6900 and the Fast Connect 6700 mobile connectivity system that are gonna enable this connection on your future devices, supporting of course the new upcoming Wi-Fi 6 standard and Bluetooth 5.2 wireless audio features. But now what's the gain using this new upcoming 6 GHz band? Well, I'm glad you asked. Wi-Fi 6C is an extension of Wi-Fi 6 which can also tap in 6 GHz band, opening up more channel and bandwidth and make congestion in the connection, I really like how it sounds, it thinks of the past, enabling speed and bandwidth of stable 3.6 gigabit per second. That is really impressive. If you remember my video about the Oculus Link 2.0 connection, because now we can use the Oculus Link with 2.0 USB cables, where the bandwidth there to have an experience that is already very enjoyable is less than 500 megabit per second. So it's not a bad start at all. But the other most important thing for VR, beside the bandwidth, of course, to have the high resolution directly wireless, well, if of course, a low latency, an extreme low latency. Because let's remember that with latency, you're gonna have motion sickness because you're gonna feel disconnected by the experience. And that's exactly how you break the immersion in the connection with the game. This new connection will deliver a reduction of latency of up to 8x in congested environment, keeping the latency under three milliseconds for your head mounted display, your HMD, your visor, your headset. 
we got to the point. But of course it doesn't stop here because another big problem for wireless in general is battery consumption. And well, with this new Wi-Fi 6E, we're gonna have a reduction of the power consumption up to 50%. That is also impressive if you add it up. I think I'm starting to say impressive a little too much. So uh, let's keep it down, right? So the other part is actually the Bluetooth. We already talked about it. It's gonna have the support of 5.2. And that's great. I didn't say impressive because that is gonna be able to deliver a multi-point audio solution. So 3D audio directly with the Bluetooth and at the same time, the same quality that you have with a wire of 96 kilohertz. And all of these without using the bandwidth of the Wi-Fi, of course, pretty smart. So let's recap, this Wi-Fi 6E will enable a faster bandwidth for higher resolution, a lower latency to play in VR wireless, of course, a better audio thanks to the new Bluetooth 5.2, and less power consumption making possible to have a smaller, lighter footprint in our headset. So please let me, this is actually impressive. <laughs> but well, when are we gonna be able to use it? Well, as we said in the past video, at the beginning, we're gonna start to have the technology with phones and viewers in a different way, so using cables. And that is gonna be the first generation. But they already talked about that the second generation will be wireless. So it's gonna use this standard to actually connect with our phone without cables. And that's what we saw also from the rumors for the Apple Glass, that Apple itself is waiting for this technology to become a thing to then be able to put it in their AR glasses that they're gonna market soon. And that is gonna take around one year and a half, two years. That's from the Qualcomm prediction, at least. So we know that this is going to happen, that we're gonna start to ditch cables pretty, pretty soon with the old new processor coming to the market. But unfortunately, we have to wait a little more. That's why for now, the five wireless adapter or the lower profile virtual desktop are still reliable solutions for now. So imagine a future with 5G, where you're gonna be able to connect your phone with a server in a remote on the cloud and stream your game directly to the phone. And from your phone, be able to stream your game to your headset, to your visor, and being able to enjoy your experience without any cable. And that's pretty, let me again, impressive, of course. And I can't really wait for it to be a reality. But that's all for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive tech video once more. I for surely did discovering this new method that we're gonna use in the future to get in VR wireless. And please let me know if you enjoyed in the comment below, a like will be super appreciated to keep going with this tech dive where we just don't get to the news, but we actually explain what is all the stuff behind because that's the important thing to understand for me and for you. So as I said, we're gonna see the current solution that we have with the Vive wireless adapter with the Vive Cosmos, a very high resolution headset very soon. And to understand, of course, what are all the things behind it. And of course, I remind you that you can support the channel in many different ways. That would be super appreciated. One is with the t-shirts that are available down there. Of course, you're gonna find the back to VR t-shirts, the sticker and stuff like that, or the t-shirt over here as well. I forgot about it. And you can also join the channel down there, like uh, these super nice people over here where you usually uh, give away some keys in the member section of the community tab. And at the same time, well, you're gonna have a little TYR uh, symbol close to you when you comment. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, just like. Subscribe to the channel for more about VR tech. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.